Hey up, it's Steve from the Old Yorkshire Geek and it's Saturday, which means it's UFO News Day. You know what, I nearly didn't do this show today because I thought, not a lot's happened. And then I did the quick search on the internet, lots of UFO news stories. So let's just uh, hit the intro and then we'll get into it. Right, I'm back. Uh, right, before we start, before we start, don't forget, like and subscribe. It's up there, all up there in the little red boxes. I know they're not links. The links are in the description. Uh, but like and subscribe and follow me on my social medias and stuff. Hit the notification bell if that does anything. I think YouTube's ignoring me anyway. <laughs> so, but never mind. Uh, apart from when it comes to copyright strikes, that's the only time YouTube YouTube pays attention to me. But anyway, right, so do all that stuff and uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and all the links for the stories that we're going to look at are in the description below, so you can read along with me and all that stuff, right. Uh, and also, while we're at it, speaking of UFOs, there it is. Hang on, let's move that a bit. There you go. Mercury Rapids, my book, is on Amazon. Uh, as I've told you before, it's a paperback for £12.99. I don't know what it is in America. Sorry. I'm sure it's available in America. but um, and, and elsewhere and all around the world. But in the UK, it's £12.99. I know that's a bit pricey for a, a paperback, but it's a big, thick book. It's a big, thick book. Um... So it's there, but if you you know if you can't afford twelve ninety nine, which you know I know things are tight these days, you can go on uh, Kindle, and if you're a member of Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. Or it's two pound twenty seven, which you know that's not going to break the bank, is it? So I'll give it a whirl on Kindle. So I just thought I'd get that out of the way, a bit of self promotion, because I've always been told you don't promote yourself enough. So here we go, I'm doing it now. <laughs> right, so let's go on to this first UFO story. Right. Uh, this is from the debrief, the strange case of the ODNI's missing UA UAP report. Welcome to this Thanksgiving holiday instalment of the Intelligence Brief. Today, as the Americans, sorry, as I meant not the Americans, well, they are the Americans, you know what I mean. As Americans gather round the table to give thanks and enjoy turkey and dressing and, you know, killing off all the, the locals with their, you know, diseases and stuff. Sorry, Americans, but, you know, it's what happened. Uh, many are wondering about the status. I'm not saying that you're bad people. It just it happened by accident. Uh, are wondering about the status of a report on unidentified aerial phenomena scheduled to be delivered to Congress back around Halloween. Uh, this week, we'll be looking at, one, the latest on why the report appears to be missing, two, what Pentagon and ODNI officials told the, D, uh, the debrief. Uh, I forgot what ODNI stands for. I'm sure it will remind us in a moment. Uh, office of something or other. Um, blah, 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 about the report earlier this month. And three, what spokespeople with the Department of Defence have had to say about the missing report as recently as this week? Quote of the week, better late than never, Matthew Henry. Right, before we get into things, a few of the stories we've been covering this week. Oh, this is other stuff, right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not about UFOs, uh, but then we get down to UFOs. There we go. Case of the mystery. With all that out of the way, it's time to turn our attention toward the mystery surrounding the latest instalment of the Pentagon's UAP assessments and why the newest UAP report is now more than three weeks late on arrival. The case of the missing ODNI UAP report. Is it going to tell us what ODNI stands for? Because I can't remember. You know what I'm like with my memory. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. That's what it stands for. Right. Late last month, the second in an ongoing series of reports on the Pentagon's assessments of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, what Joe Public calls UFOs and still calls UFOs, uh, the 2022 National Defence Authorisation Act, NDAA, uh, mandated that the report be delivered to Congress by October 31st, followed by an unclassified version of the briefing made available to the public thereafter. 
Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines has until Monday to provide Congress with its first annual unclassified update on unexplained aerial phenomena, ABC News reported, adding that the forthcoming report was expected to detail all new UAP incidents over the past year and any previously unreported incidents. And there's a photo, a screenshot of the gimbal UFO that... um, from 2015, right. As Halloween came and went, it was evident that the new report would be late on arrival. With little doubt, the ODNI website received a significant amount of traffic as watchful UAP proponents kept an eye on the site's newsroom page where its reports and publications appear online. A lot of peas in that one. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> a page where reports and publications appear. Uh, Yet despite copious amounts of page refreshes, the report never arrived. Now more than three weeks after its expected deadline, we're still waiting, and based on the latest assessments of the situation, it seems that the UAP report hasn't even made its way to Congress yet. Word arrives from the Pentagon. Back in early November, the debrief checked in with the Pentagon on the status of the missing UAP report. So my me, me, me beard keeps catching my microphone. <laughs> uh, receiving a response from Pentagon spokesperson Sue Goff with the Defence Press Operations, who told us that the DOD would not comment on the report prior to its delivery to Congress. At the time, this had been the first indication we had received directly, or seen anywhere else for that matter, that the report hadn't even been delivered to Congress yet. Uh, Goff provided us uh, with the following additional information regarding the DOD's perspectives on UAP. There is no single explanation that addresses the majority of UAP reports. We are collecting as much data as we can, following the data where it leads, and will share our findings whenever possible. We will not rush to conclusions in our analysis. In many cases, observed phenomena are are classified as unidentified simply because sensors were not able to collect enough information to make a positive attribution. We are working to mitigate these shortfalls for the future and to ensure we have sufficient data for our analysis. Boom fluff is that, isn't it? That's what that is. Uh, DOD takes public interest in UAP seriously, Goff concluded. I think what she's saying is a load of Goff and is committed to the principles of openness and accountability to the American people, which it must balance with its obligation to protect sensitive information, sources, and methods. As a follow up to the statement from the Pentagon, I also reached out to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI but was told by an ODNI spokesperson that they had no additional guidance at this time. So what is the status of the report, you may ask? In the letter to John Greenwald of the Black Vault on November 14th, I remember when he was a kid, I do, the ODNI again confirmed that the report had still not been provided to Congress. Then earlier this week, on November 22nd, uh, Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh held a press briefing while Patrick S. Ryder, press secretary for the DOD since August, was travelling in Cambodia. During the briefing, NextGov Defence Technology Correspondent Brandy Vincent also queried Singh on the missing ODNI UAP report. Just checking in on this, Vincent said, the NDAA for 2022 required reports uh, from the Pentagon on unidentified aerial phenomena starting October 31st of this year, and then annually until 2026 after. Delivered to appropriate congressional committees, do you have an update for us on that report? Whether we will see an unclassified version soon, anything there? And there's Brandy Singh. Uh, not Brandy Singh, sir. Where did they get Brandy Singh from? Sabrina Singh. Uh, well, somebody will be called Brandy. Oh, I want the... Yeah, Brandy Vincent, sorry. Uh, Sabrina Singh. Uh, I don't have an update on the report, Singh told Vincent. I believe it's still with ODNI for review. Until we get that out, I wouldn't be able to... to... I don't have anything for you at this time. So, quick uh, backpedalling there. I don't know, honest. (laughs) (sighs) What's what's the word? Uh, The delaying out there, you know, um, um, flannelling. As far as you know, it hasn't been delivered to the committees, Vincent asked. As far as I'm aware, but you would have to ask those committees, Singh replied. Based on Singh's statements, 
during Tuesday's briefing, all indications appear to be that the UAP report still has not been delivered to Congress. So what's the hold-up? In its November 14th correspondence with Greenwald, Gregory Koch, uh, the ODNI uh, Freedom of Information Act public liaison with the ODNI's Information Management Office, Crikey. Uh, stated that we expect the final report to be prov- provided in short order. So no wonder they get lost, in it? All these different acronyms. <laughs> they'll all be filed, all in different filing cabinets with all different acronyms in oh, these days. Computer folders with different acronyms. That's why stuff gets lost. Uh, although there still appears to be little or no movement on the issue. Obviously, Thanksgiving holiday celebrations have likely helped to further impede the report's delivery. At this point, it seems unclear whether Congress will receive the classified version before month's end, so while there will be little new information about the government's ongoing assessment on UAP to discuss around the table with family and friends this Thanksgiving holiday, with any luck, the report's late delivery may end up making a nice stocking stuffer in advance of the next holiday celebration. They're just going to keep putting it off, are they? That is, if we're lucky enough to see anything from the ODNI before Christmas. Uh, that wraps up this week's instalment of the Intelligence Brief. Oh, so blah, 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 blah. And there you go. So, so they're just the 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 stalling, aren't they? That's the word I was trying to think of. The stalling. That's what they're doing. Uh, so I don't think we'll see it this year. Uh, I don't think we'll see it ever. I think they'll just keep stalling and they'll hope that everybody forgets about it. That's what they're going to do. So right, let's move on to a, a related... A related um, New story. Government employees who are UFO witnesses may soon break their silence. And there's a row of people. <laughs> uh, so that says um, Susan. Where are we? Susan Sviatek. Apologies. Director of the Virginia chapter of the Mutual UFO Network, Mufon, speaks during a panel discussion at Mysteries of Space and Sky in Gambrills, Maryland. There you go. That's all that is. Uh, any familiar faces there? I don't know. Probably, if you're into UFOs and stuff, maybe there is. Uh, there, there's some that look familiar, I must admit, but I can't put any names to them. I can't put any names to them, but there's some look familiar. But uh, Anyway, right, more US military and government officials with knowledge of or existence, uh, existence, experience with UFOs are expected to come out of the shadows soon. Out of the shadows. Uh, that's because, oh, pardon me, burping. That's because the annual defence authorisation bill will likely include language allowing current and former employment uh, government employees. I'll learn to read one of these days. And federal contractors to share what they know about UFOs, or what the federal government prefers to call unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs, without fear of reprisal. The government is included... What am I talking about the government? What's up with me? The provision is included in the House version of the National Defence Authorisation Act for the next fiscal year that was approved in July. The Senate has not approved its own version. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy... Uh, not the actor, I don't think, who starred in... I think he's died, hasn't he? Who starred in uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, amongst other things. Who's vying, a different person, who's vying to become the next House Speaker, said last week that he'd like to delay passage of the bill until next year. What happened then? I thought something changed on the page then. Uh, when his Republican Party takes control of the chamber. UFO investigator and author Richard Lang said, he, said he's in touch with people who have knowledge about the phenomenon that they want to share when the time is right. If that language survives Congress and ends up being part of the act, then these guys are saying they're going to start talking about stuff that's happened, Lang said. A lot of them are going to start talking. Susan Swiatek again, apologies, I don't know how you pronounce it, is the state director of the Virginia chapter of the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, the world's largest and oldest civilian UFO investigating organisation. She said the proposed ban on reprisals is just one of several encouraging signs in recent years that the government is becoming more transparent about discussing and investigating mysterious objects seen in our skies. (laughs) A lot of different people are coming at this from different angles in the government and in the US military complex. And it's all good. Why did it say US? Well, whatever. And it's all good, Swiatek said. Her hope, get some fresh air on the thing, 
and the power of the bright sanitising light of day and maybe get some of this stuff more out in the open, she said. Lang and Swiatek. Earlier this month at the annual Mysteries of Space and Sky UFO conference in Gambrels, Maryland. Well, that's supposed to be a... That's, I think that's supposed to be a photo there, isn't there? Uh, there have been numerous developments in the last five years indicating the subject of UFOs has been taken more seriously by the government, the media and the public. Just this year, Congress held its first hearing about UFOs in half a century and NASA put together an independent study team to figure out how best to collect and scientifically analyse data on UFOs going forward, which is not good. What is it? It's, it's $100,000 or whatever they're going to spend on it. Is it 16 people? Is it 19 people? Whatever. Over nine months, or is it 18 months? I don't know. But it's not going to be long, is it? And it's going to be a whitewash. So there you go. So hopefully government employees will be able to speak about their their UFO um, experiences. But I don't think they will, because there's still that stigma, isn't there? Uh, and there still will be. Right, crashed meteor may have been a UFO, scientists say. Uh, meanwhile, see Megan Fox in a sexy see-through mesh dress. <laughs> oh, you can't see that it's behind here, but that just caught my eye for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, Professor Avi, uh, Abby Loeb, I thought we were Avi Loeb, oh, whatever, is leading an ex expedition to determine if an object that fell in the Pacific Ocean is a UFO. A Harvard professor believes that a meteor that crashed in the ocean near Australia in 2014 might have actually been a UFO. He's not really saying that. Now, Professor Abby Loeb is heading a $2.2 million scientific expedition per Seven News in Australia, who do some good UFO stuff, by the way. You should, uh, they've got a YouTube channel. Go subscribe to it. Uh, into the middle of the southwestern Pacific Ocean in order to recover the mysterious space object. For many, life in space is an unquestionable reality. Well, yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Statistically. Uh, while others find the idea of aliens hard to believe. Because, you know. While many believe the limited knowledge we have of life on other planets is due to the government conspiracies covering up UFO sightings. Well, it's part of it, isn't it? Others believe that we just haven't received enough evidence here on Earth yet. Well, we've enough evidence, but with no proof. No definitive proof. Well, there is somewhere, but we just it hasn't been made public. Anyway, nearly a decade ago, the, the meteor crashed uh, into the Pacific Ocean about 160 kilometres off the coast of Papua New Guinea. That's about, what, about 90 miles in it, something like that. Uh, an island country in Oceania, just north of the coast of um, Queensland, Australia. The material that formed the meteor is tougher than iron, which has led scientists to wonder if the body of space matter is simply an unusual rock, or perhaps something more unusual, a bit of a spacecraft created by an alien species from a developed civilization far, far away from our planet. Well, they wouldn't be making the spaceships out of iron. Even we don't make a spaceship out of iron. They made it like um, titanium and magnesium irons and stuff like that, and tungsten and all this stuff. Uh, and, you know, steel, which is a form of iron, but, you know, tempered steel and all stuff like that. Lightweight things. Where, where were we? Uh, this expedition has been created to discover which one it is, whether unusual rock or UFO, we will soon find out. And there's a legit picture of UFOs. That's really that taken from the International Space Station. <laughs> I'm lying, by the way. Uh, Loeb's project received full funding, which will allow them to excavate the ocean floor I don't think it will, and investigate the materials that fell from the sky eight years ago. This type of meteor is one of only three similar objects to be discovered near Earth. The pancake-shaped UFO Oumuamua was discovered in 2017. Uh, Oumuamua is an unidentifiable object, flying object, well, flying object, it was in space, wasn't it, uh, that was in a hyperbolic orbit in our solar system and is speculated to be either a bit of an alien spacecraft or a chunk from an unknown planet. I don't know, it's come from outside the solar system as a moor moor, and it's on its way back out again now. And it's now thought to be pancake-shaped, but originally it was thought to be like cigar-shaped. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of both. 
In 2018, the first known interstellar comet Borisov was discovered and is considered the only other known interstellar object to have flown into our solar system. If Loeb's hypothesis is correct, the oceanic meteor would be confirmed as the third interstellar bit of space to come within Earth's reach. This would make the three the only confirmed interstellar connections ever and all within a single decade, which means it's probably it's happening all the time, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, scientist and Harvard professor Loeb is a firm believer that aliens, aliens exist and he hopes that his UFO project will give humans more answers to confirm this. I don't think he's a UFO believer though, and it's not a UFO project, is it? But anyway, we'll see. He argues that because our solar system's sun is five billion years younger than most of the universe's stars, the idea of another civilization being formed and learning about how to create spacecraft is not inconceivable. There was plenty of time for them to send probes that would reach us, he said. Loeb proposes the valid argument that humans shouldn't assume we are the smartest kids in the cosmic universe, the cosmic universe, and that we have much more to learn from our alien neighbours if they do exist. Uh, Loeb hopes to learn much from his expedition and he will continue to look within space, Earth's ground and the ocean floor to find the answers he is looking for. Any findings from Loeb's mission will be placed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Why? Shouldn't it be in a university somewhere? <sighs> No, that's it. That's it. That's how it ends. So, any, any, I don't get that. Any findings from Loeb's mission will be placed in the Museum of Modern Art. What, it should be like a research thing. <sighs> Maybe it means after after they've done all the research. But if it, I don't know. It's baffling. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. So it will they're, they're not find. They either not find anything, or they just find rocks, and they will say, "Oh, it's it's meteoric iron." That's what they'll say. They will. Uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm a bit uh, snotty. Uh, probably coming down with something. Right, next up, fun, re fun research on Cold War era ads about flying saucers, UFOs, finds themes that remain relevant today. And there's some sort of newspaper advert, probably. Uh, sure Save newspaper ad featuring a Martian woman who rented a flying saucer. I presume that's going to say. A look at history often provides some context for the present and might even inform the future, so it's not surprising two Penn State faculty members' uh, review of Cold War era print and television advertisements about flying saucers and UFOs oh, me. <laughs> prompted some themes. Is it whenever I say UFOs, a burp? No, 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 never mind. And one overarching business reality uh, that informs television and internet ads these days. Plus, the research was simply fun, according to Matt McAllister, a professor of film production and media studies, who collaborated with Greg, oh my goodness, <laughs> how do you say that, Egegian, uh, a professor of history. Their results, after reviewing more than 150 print and television ads from 1947 to 1989, were published in Advertising and Society Quarterly. Once you start looking at, uh, for the ads... What are you up to? Sorry, my, my cat's just doing things. Um, once you start looking for the ads, you really notice them. They pop out, McAllister said. Along with TV ads, McAllister and Agigian, I apologise if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, reviewed uh, print ads in databases from the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times over 40 plus years. The ads were analysed for symbolic function and the characteristics flying saucers slash UFOs played in advertising. Ads with similar functions were noted and those functions were then collated with each advertisement's year of circulation and with developments both in the advertising industry and ufology or the study of UFOs. Excuse me. Right. McAllister said his background in advertising history complemented the Gideon's knowledge of Cold War events and UFO cultural meaning. It was a great collaboration between two different academic perspectives, said McAllister. Uh, this is an advertising and society quarterly, 2022. I don't know. Is this about UFOs? Let's have a look, eh? Did you get your free flying saucer? Got it right here on Super Sugar Crisp. 
Now, in Post Super Sugar Crisp, you get a free-flying saucer. Just wind it up and let it fly. My Uncle Hoyer than yours. They're really up there. Look at them go. It's going into orbit. Whatever goes up must come down. Here we go again. Get yourself a flying saucer. Now free inside every specially marked box of Post Super Sugar Crisp. There you go. Right, six themes emerged. There were modern fashion and design with circular aesthetics used to evoke modern styles, technological progress and utopias meant to associate ads and products with advancements, little green men as consumers with ads featuring futuristic customers or even brand ambassadors, alarming language and images in ads for flying saucer media, most commonly books about aliens visiting Earth that played on paranoia, and became especially prevalent during the Cold War period. It's a weird one to have in there. They stuck that in the middle, didn't they? Using flying saucers for publicity stunts and camouflaged advertising forms with saucer-shaped flyers dropped from the sky to ads that looked like flying saucer news stories, uh, and UFOs representing consumer awe and transcendence, an approach that became more prominent in the 1980s uh, and portrayed massive alien craft that mimicked portrayals in films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So they're all jolly and happy. Perhaps that middle one, alarming language and, you know, and the Cold War and paranoia. <sighs> anyway. The thematic analysis and grouping of findings into theme areas challenged the researchers' creativity and one bit of success always seemed to lead to another as discussion and findings led to further insights. Plus the post-World War II era. Uh, when technology became more ubiquitous and the space race captured the attention of the public across the world, provided necessary context to the flying saucer and UFO ads. I think it's been largely forgotten just how much mainstream media attention was paid to flying saucers, UFOs and the prospect of alien visitors, Agigian said. Especially in the 50s, 60s and 70s, they were big news, a regular feature of newspapers, radio and TV. As both experts stretched themselves a bit during the collaboration, they learned things, were surprised by others, and ultimately found a connection with the advertising industry these days. And we've got another another video here. Let's have a look. Yes, sir. Uh, may I help you? Oh, uh, I'd like two of those, please. Hot dogs? Yes, sir. And three of those. And one of those. And five bars of these. Consume. And a of nice hot liquid. <laughs> uh, coffee. Uh, coming right up. Oh, and two bags of those peculiar white puffy material. Uh, you mean our crunchy popcorn. Uh, uh, shall I wrap that for you, sir? Oh, that's all right. Buy some Not paid for it, are they? <laughs> they come from miles to enjoy our intermission. There you go, an intermission. Sponsored by Westlows. Ooh, crack a plane again. Accident. Right, what shocked me the most was we saw all the garish ads for UFO books in the New York Times, which is often academic or staid. McAllister said, to see page after page of carnival barker type things was jarring and unexpected, but it was post-World War II, so there's a lot going on with the space race, technological advancement and competition, not only between the United States and Soviet Union, but print and televised advertising. McAllister said, uh, ooh, cracky. Well, McAllister said, those were, ads were likely influenced by pressure print outlets felt from TV... By pressure, print outlets felt from TV, uh, which was gobbling up advertising dollars at the time, clearly a threat to the newspaper's bottom line. It's not unlike the competition between television and the internet now, McAllister said. You often see these advertising-related historical shifts. Plus, things like dealing with change and stunt marketing remain an important part of advertising, just as they were with flying saucers and UFOs. While ads with flying saucers and UFOs may use them differently than in the past, desired messages and reactions from those who place the ads have not changed. Emotion and sensation continue to motivate purchasers and advertisers consistently seek to share messages about quality and technology. Plus, the appetite for consumers for big events has never waned. 
Still, McAllister said, the business of ads remains an enduring aspect of the relationship between advertising mediums. In the 40 years of content for the research, there was an ongoing conflict between newspapers and TV, prompting changes to the kind of advertisements or advertisements, however you pronounce it. Uh, Newspapers accepted, although not specifically part of their analysis, he said TV has been on the other side of that relationship in recent years, with the growth of the internet and advertisers moving there to find bigger audiences. Oh, that's it. Uh, That's it. More information at Matthew P. McAllister et al. Flying saucers and UFOs in US advertising during the Cold War, 1947-89, Advertising and Society Quarterly 2022. And there's a link if you want to follow that link from this link. So there you go. That was that was interesting. I remember in, when we did um, UFO Data magazine. I think we did, uh, I think more than one article about um, about UFOs used in like advertising and in, and in you know popular culture and stuff like that. Because uh, it's a big thing, right? We're moving on to some actual sightings now. Are you ready for this stuff? Because there's some interesting things here. Right, Backliff man, no idea where Backliff is, recounts encounter with something out there. It's somewhere in America. I think it's Texas. Uh, there we go. Richard Powers shows the cropped cell phone image of what he claims is an unidentified flying object at his home in Backliff on Tuesday. Powers saw the fast moving lights over his house in October. And there's the. There you go. I mean, I don't know. It, it could be car headlights for all I know. Just you know, the long it's had a you know shaky image and it's caused a trail. I don't know. It's just what I'm saying. Initial um, initial thoughts. Um, I think it's Texas because I think it's from the Galveston News or whatever, isn't it? Where are we? Galveston County, I and mean, I think that's in Texas, isn't it? I think. Does it say anywhere? Does it say no? But anyway, I think it's Texas. Right, Backliff. It was an ordinary night until Richard Powers. By the way, check that. Yep. Uh, until Richard Powers saw the tentacle-like lights floating over his home. Without an easy explanation for what he witnessed, Powers had seen uh, what is, by definition, an unidentified flying object. A UFO. Powers, a retired technician, saw thin white connected lights coursing through the sky October 4th while he was at a gathering with friends. Uh, Powers, who affirmed he was sober during the encounter, said a bright orange flash in the sky caught his eye and was followed by thin lights undulating together for a brief moment before rapidly separating. The lights then turned into eight separate beams of light, he said Tuesday. Oh, pardon me, sorry. I'll edit, I'll edit that out. <laughs> the lights were too far up in the sky and too much too fast to have been drones, which he had seen many times, Powers said. If you blinked, you would have missed them, Powers said. They were so fast, it was phenomenal. He got a photo, though, didn't he? With his observation, uh, Powers joined a growing number of Americans and Texans who've seen something in the sky that defies their understanding. Reports of UFOs have increased in the United States and Texas has been a major oh yeah, is Texas has been a major hotspot in the past few years, said Ken Jordan, state director of the Mutual UFO Network. The group, best known by the acronym MUFON, is a non-profit organisation that studies uh, reports of UFO sightings. It has more than 4,000 members around the world and is active in 43 countries, Jordan said. Texas has had 5,805 reported UFO sightings since 1949, according to the National UFO Reporting Centre, a non-governmental non-profit corporation that investigates UFO sightings and alien contacts. Although anything uh, moving aloft and not clearly identified is strictly speaking a UFO, the sightings come with obvious implications of things otherworldly, such as extraterrestrial craft, are things undisclosed, such as super-secret military technology. The world is still divided among those who scoff at the notion of UFO, that UFOs are anything more than the mundane seen in odd light, perhaps, and those who believe they might be far more, but the possibility of far more has become much more widely accepted recently than it had been in the past. The US Congress gathered uh, May 17th to discuss recent sightings of unexplained aerial phenomena in the nation. It was the first such meeting since 1969. And here we're going on about the uh, the ODNI report that's not arrived yet. But um, And a bit on Project Blue Book. Uh, and there, 
Well, I'll read. I'll carry on reading. Lawmakers were shown these classified videos of UAPs or unexplained aerial phenomena, including a video shot by a military pilot passing a spherical object in the distance. The New York Times reported, The stigma associated with UAPs has gotten in the way of good intelligence analysis, uh, US Representative Andre Carson said at the meeting. Pilots avoided reporting uh, or were laughed at when they did, which I think that's there's still that stigma. Uh, even if they're legally allowed to to talk about you know what they've seen, the you know the co-workers and stuff, I still think they're potty over. Anyway, da, 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 da. Pentagon officials uh, testified under oath that the U.S. government did not collect materials from alien landings on Earth. The New York Times reported. The Pentagon and the Central Intelligence Agency have been looking into reports of unidentified objects in the sky for decades. The Associated Press reported. From 1952 to 1969, the government had a U.S. Air Force program named Project Blue Book, uh, which was made to investigate UFOs according to Project Blue Book, which is a document that can be found on the FBI's Public Vault website. The reports were made available by the Freedom of Information Act. From 1947 to 1969, there were a total of 12,618 UFO sightings, many of which were explained, but 701 of which were never identified by the government, according to Project Blue Book. On December 17, 1969, the Secretary of the Air Force announced the termination of the programme, according to the document. UFO sightings in America go as far back as 1639 when the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, John Winthrop, wrote in his journal about citizens encountering strange bright lights in the sky. Winthrop had described a story of three credible men rowing a boat when they had seen a great light alternating throughout the sky, which still has historians and scientists discussing what it could have been. <coughs> you me. Uh, Powers acknowledges that... Uh, inevitably there will be readers who will doubt the experience but it won't change his mind about the encounter he said frenzy has shown the photos also were awed by it he said uh, powers who has had two heart attacks in the past two months thought it was important to reach out to the media about his encounter out of fear he would die soon he said there's something out there powers said and i've seen it well good for him yeah. good for him like I say, his, 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 his photo, it leaves a bit to be desired, to be honest. But his star is interesting. His description is interesting. Uh, where are we? Uh, bright orange flash and thin lights undulating and then separating and then turning into eight beams of light. That's an interesting description. But his photo, you know. But at least he's got something, hasn't he? At least he's got something there, captured, whatever it is. So there you go. So good for, um, I forgot his name already, uh, Richard Powers. Uh, and I hope it was uh, something otherworldly. Right, UFO spotted glowing in the sky over Slovakia. That's definitely not a plane. UFO enthusiasts know that the objects in question come in several different varieties. Uh, there are the classic flying saucers. There are the Tic Tacs or oblong craft reported by several military pilots. There are the triangle-shaped UFOs. And then there are the orbs. Orb-style UFOs recently made national news during the congressional hearings after a congressman asked for answers on a case from more than 50 years ago when a glowing red orb appeared over a military missile installation in Montana. But this one was nowhere near the US, rather the strange glowing light appeared in the sky in Slovakia in Eastern Europe. And there's the, the TikTok thing, we'll have a look in a minute. The video purports to be of a strange blinding light in the sky over a small village in Slovakia. In the video, the light hovers in place for several long moments, becoming brighter and immersions... What does that mean? Uh, before finally vanishing altogether. And immersions... What's that? What is it, a drone, a flare? It's certainly not the moon, and eyewitnesses say it, that it didn't behave like a drone or a flare either. Or either. People all over the world want to know what it is we are dealing with and when it, uh, when it comes to these unidentified aerial phenomena, though the US government has finally, after nearly a century, started to take the UFO. We're saying this all the time, aren't we? Every article talks about taking it more seriously, but we still haven't got that bloody report, have we, from the ODNI? 
Anyway, in the comments, Slovakian viewers agree. I have lived in Slovakia since I was born, and I can say something weird is happening above us, says one viewer, claiming he too uh, has footage that will blow our minds. Enough is enough. You have full disclosure now. Yeah, good for whoever wrote this. Who wrote it? Diana Logan. Good for you, Diana. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Uh, let's go back. Right, there we go. Can you see it? Yeah. Apparently that's not the moon. That's not the moon, it says in the thing. This is the most mysterious footage recorded in Slovakia. Come on, I've already played it, woman. No, and it's not a flare. Witness was reported something. What's he doing that for? TikTok, eh? There you go, it started off big, and it shrinks down. It was just out of focus, I don't know. But then it just vanishes, disappears, and that's it, that's your lot. So we'll play it again, we'll play it again. So you can see it. I've clicked it. It won't let me. Why? That's spooky, isn't it? Oh, but it does this too. Doing that again. Uh, there you go, it's a... That's a there you go, a bit of a flicker. Could it be like a light on a helicopter or something? But they'd say, well, they'd say we could hear a helicopter. I don't know what it is. It's obviously not a satellite. Even one of these satellites that flare up, like an iridium flare, or you know, ones that catches the sun. Don't, they're not like that, are they? They're not like that. So, yes, yeah, so that's a weird one. It's a weird one, is that? I mean, it could just be an aircraft high up with some sort of bright light on it that's... We've just seen it at uh, the odd angle. I did see a bit of a beam there, I must admit. And then it disappears, so they switch the light off. It could have been a helicopter or something like that with a searchlight on. Or even a regular aircraft. I don't know. But it's still interesting. It's interesting. I don't know. If it were a regular aircraft, you'd have thought they'd have heard something and they'd have said we could hear it. But I don't know. don't know what the ambient sound was because they just put music on. They said they're just listening to the what the ambient sound was. Anyway, right. This is a good one. There's a good one, the swearing in this one. <laughs> Gigantic UFO appears in the sky over Orlando after a loud boom echoes over central Florida. People in Florida just roll differently. This we know. I mean, we do have a whole cachet of stories under the hashtag, uh, hashtag WTF Florida. After all, but the, oh, I'll take your word for it. There's also the Florida man thing, isn't there, that you, you've you got to search for aren't you, on the news, apparently. And Florida man's done everything, hasn't he? But anyway, I guess when you regularly hear things about, like, 18-foot-long pythons eating alligators and people getting stabbed by 100-pound sailfish while they're in a boat, not much phases you anymore. Probably got a tickle in nose again. Uh, that's the only explanation I have for why, when a humongous UFO <coughs> excuse me, appeared in the sky over Orlando, Florida recently, everyone just carried on about their business like nothing was happening. Uh, I had to come online because I want I want y'all to see this TikToker Siobhan says what says while shooting video of the UFO. I'm not tripping. There's a there is a effing UFO out here in the middle of the damn sky. Everybody's riding around like they don't see this shit. <laughs> like they don't see this uh, shit. So apparently everybody, uh, sorry, so apparently yesterday in Orlando or in central Florida, you could hear a loud boom from five something in the morning all the way from Jacksonville to Orlando. This is what they say. It came from Jacksonville to Orlando yesterday. There was a loud boom at 5am and they say it was some kind of spaceship that landed that was in orbit for like 909 days that landed secretly. Oh, is that the um, uh, is it X303? Am I getting that right? Or is it the U, UB? I forgot what they call it now. That like mini shuttle, like a space plane. Uh, is that in it? It's unmanned. Uh, that landed secretly that don't, that don't nobody know about at the Kennedy Space Centre. Okay, she's got her stories mixed up. Oh, here we go. The US military did recently have a secret space plane in orbit for a record 908 days that returned to Kennedy on November 12th. Uh, what it was doing up there is a whole other mystery, uh, but it isn't related to this. That doesn't take anything away from what she recorded in Orlando, however. Back to her story. 
Now, also, a couple of weeks ago, right, a couple of weeks ago, I heard in my complex there was this louder boom. Uh, it sounded like a... Sounded like a big hole. It sounded like a space. It was taken off from the roof, off the roof of the building, like it was just really loud. I think we, when we play the video, I think you're going to hear this in her voice. I think uh, it was really loud, but there was nothing in the sky. Whole neighbourhood came out and was looking, and there was nothing. You've got to understand, everybody. Don't see what you see, what you, because they are not vibing high. They're vibrating at a low frequency. So that's why they can't see you, one viewer comment, commented. Oh, no, not her saying that. It's been theorised that the same thing happens with people who see Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, I understand what they're talking about. They're talking about vibrations and stuff, and if things vibrate at a different frequency to everything else, it sort of like winks in, in and out of existence, and that's what they're trying to say, isn't it? Uh, the TikTok account that shared the video at master.zebula wrote, real footage caught on Instagram live of ship slash sham, don't know what they're saying that for, in Orlando, Florida. They are here and they don't care no more on revealing themselves slowly but surely to the public. He's certainly not wrong there. Take a look at some of the UFO video below. Warning language. Right, are you ready for this? <laughs> All the way from um, Jacksonville to Orlando. This is what they say. It came from from Jacksonville to Orlando yesterday. There was a loud boom at 5 a.m. and they said it was some kind of spaceship that landed um, that was in orbit for like 909 days that landed secretly that don't nobody know about it. Um, the Kennedy Space Center. Now, also a couple weeks ago, right? A couple weeks ago, I heard um, in, in my uh, complex, there was like this loud ass boom, sounded like a, um, it sounded like a big old, um, it sounded like, like a spaceship was taken off of the roof, off the roof of the building. Like it was, it was just it was really loud. Like it was really loud and, but there was nothing in the sky. The whole neighborhood came out and was looking, there was nothing. Oh, that's it. There you go. That's it. That's it. Go back. So oh, there you go. You can see it in the distance there. I think, to be honest, I'm not sure if they're actual lights or if it's lights. I had to come on live. onto the clouds, maybe. Because I, I want y'all to see this. I'm not tripping. That is a fucking UFO <laughs> out here. In the middle of the damn sky, everybody is riding around like they don't see this shit. Like they don't see this shit. So I've got to pause it because on to the next thing, doesn't it? Good old TikTok, you know. That's why I don't use TikTok. Stick to YouTube or whatever or Instagram. TikTok's ruby. But yeah, it's interesting. Uh, oh, we have got some uh, some clips uh, below. Is Yvonne's oh full twenty minute video of a UFO encounter in Orlando? Oh, so footage here so let's have a look and she gone how do i turn this thing around i'm not going to watch it for 20 minutes but... this is not like it isn't it take the music off let's just see what's going on i had to come on live because i want y'all to see this i'm not tripping there is a fucking ufo out here in the middle of the damn sky. Everybody is riding. There you go. So that's, that's, that's an in interesting. Um, I've actually seen some similar footage to this recently, and I can't find it. I saw it on, I'm sure it was on YouTube. I thought it was Third Space and Moon that, that did it, but I've looked and I, 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 it's disappeared. I can't find it. Um, maybe I dreamt it. I don't know. But um, in... Um, somewhere like Mexico or South America or somewhere like that, in either Central or South America, uh, they've been getting videos like this. Um, that originally, initially, they, you think, oh, is it a Starlink train? And then you watch it, you think, well, no, it's obviously not that. And uh, Just like you know, lights that are a little bit reminiscent of the Phoenix lights, aren't they? That's what they are. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what it is. 
my initial thoughts were they look hazy enough to be like lights, searchlight, not searchlights, but you know, like lights shining up onto clouds from below. Because uh, it is Orlando, remember? You know, it's where Disney World is and Universal Studios, and there's always something going on in there in Orlando, Florida. So it could be to do with that. But uh, let's just spin it on and see. Uh, oh, she's uh, she's in a car now. She oh, there, we've got some more footage here. Look, oh, it's moving about. So yeah, yeah, I think it's. Um, I don't know. To be honest. I don't know, to be honest. I think it's time I take my black ass in the house for real. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like Siobhan. I like Siobhan. But that's... Uh, oh, then she's going home now. She obviously, that's doing the live streams. But yeah, it's, I don't know what this is. I'm still thinking lights shining up onto the clouds. Y'all see that? Some sort of display... But I don't know. I don't know. I gotta go get a cigar. <laughs> I gotta go smoke a blunt. Oh, this is wild. She's great. Yeah, very interesting that. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, I'm still thinking lights shining up onto the clouds and underneath the clouds, but you know, I don't know. I'll leave you. I'll leave it for you to decide. But it's there. Follow the link. You can look at it. You know, at your leisure. Uh, is that it? Oh, hang on, we haven't done yet. And here are some pictures she took prior to recording her video. All oh, right, so she's got some pictures. That she so, how do I turn the uh, the music off? It's not letting me. It's not letting me turn the audio off. Never mind. Never mind. You can do, look a look at that guy. I get into trouble, you know, with copyright and all that. Pretty compelling stuff. Oh, and that's it, right? There you go. So yes, it is. It's interesting, is that? That is very interesting. Um, particularly the, the later stuff. This, the later stuff that she she showed. Never mind the TikTok video. Look at her, her you know, her raw footage. That's the stuff you need to watch. Right, and finally today. Third phase of moon, yeah, good old, whatever they're called. I can never remember the names. <laughs> I can never remember the names. But here they are. Go, go follow them on YouTube. Uh, we've got Jellyfish UFO, what's happening on Earth. Can't be explained. Obviously, I won't, I won't just play it all. I'll spin it on. Um, do we see this? Now, this, this UFO is interesting. My initial thoughts were it's a drone. But that little bit underneath, that rotated part, I'm not sure about. I mean, it could be some weird drone, like an experimental, you know, design, maybe. But is that a light in the middle flashing, or is it just something opening and closing to show what's behind? I don't know. So that's interesting in itself, and then they go on and show us some other stuff. Uh, da, da, da. See, they keep looking at that. And the, a similar one. Um, there you go. All right. We're watching it Texas. once again. Austin, Texas, captured August 2022. Uh, even cleaner footage. This is I mean, it looks better. It's, it's better reminded me of like a phenomenon. gyroscope. Again, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Is it some kind of new contraption of a drone that propels and spins to create lift again i haven't school. seen one of these i could be wrong but again getting to the cat so there's that one which is a similar thing but uh and i say i got gyroscope vibes from that one these objects uh you would think that they would get really dizzy um here's an so there's that one and then the go on to show us uh, this one. This is a weird one. I think this one is over uh, London, I think. I think it's the same. From 2007, Oh, there's something spinning about, isn't it? I don't know what that is. So, so, side by side. So now we're watching this once again from London and we get an even closer look at this thing. 
Again, I'm kind of maybe leaning towards some kind of new kite out there. Uh, we're not saying these are extraterrestrial. We're just uh, considering that whatever it is in the sky at this moment, it's unidentified to us. So, yeah, so there you go. So that's uh, interesting. I don't know what that is. Um, I suspect it's probably something mundane that's just been caught doing weird things. But you never know. You never know. Um, oh, they're, they're talking about um, fireworks that uh, spin about. Um, is it a test for a, a mechanism that would hold a firework? I don't know. I don't know. But it seems to be it's just up there in the sky, isn't it? It's not fastened to anything. I don't know. Um, what have we got here? What's happening here? Oh, this might be what I'm talking about. The videos that I couldn't find. <laughs> You know, related to Siobhan's video from a minute ago. It is, yes. This is what I'm talking about. See, Mr. Hiron. I don't know what it is. I initially thought, you know, Starlink, but you see, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think they found another one. Uh, a similar All right, sighting. so we're looking into this a little closer, and at first I thought this could simply be the Starlink. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of Starlink videos coming in from the public, and we're not interested in sharing Starlink videos here. We want to find things that we can't explain. And in this case, I'm looking at it closer, and this is lower to the horizon. When you're looking at Starlink, you see a much higher uh, basically at a 90 degree this one's too low in my opinion i mean that all depends on the, the orbit that they're being put in to be honest um oh that's it that's your lot um there you go so yeah uh check out that video in its entirety on third third of the moon. Okay. give them a subscribe because they're uh, you know good lads and they show some good stuff uh, and that's your lot for this week. Uh, another hour's gone by. Wow. Uh, but there'll be a slight edit <laughs> that you you may or may not notice because I had to I had to deal with this this cat. There's a, a pussy cat there who's naughty, aren't you? Yes, you were. Who came and uh, interrupted me mid uh, mid show? So I'm gonna have to chop that out. Right, so we'll leave it there. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little uh, distraction that I've provided. Uh, I did like Siobhan's video. I do. I like Siobhan. I wonder if she'll, wonder if she'll marry me. <laughs> if I move over to Orlando. <laughs> right, we'll leave it there. So, wherever you are in the universe, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see thee.